Is there anything I can touch up here that would shock me? Not really. Okay. So that is... That is the GMS-10. GMS-10. I'm going to mark it. You hold to, it? No, because I'm going to take it off and drill them a little deeper and straighten yeah. That's unbelievable. Everything, this is like what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, that's the old Taiwanese uh, wiring is all actually pretty good. This is what makes everything work. Okay, let me just drill these a little bit straighter and deeper. Split. Jumbly jumbles. Facing up or down? Doesn't matter. Because the other the garment thing's facing up. Well, I would face that down, except that if I face it down, these plugs will be butting up against here. So I had to turn it actually the opposite way of what I wanted to. Yeah. Does that need to connect to that thing, the garment? Thing? This right here is the same thing, and it will connect right to here. And then this one, even though it's long, will is, connect also. Is that the same thing where it should be facing whatever has more open? Um. It probably should face up because I'll probably run, it's like all these wires are up here. Yeah. I'll probably run these up like this and they'll go into this bundle oh, all the yeah. way over there. It's probably better. This one's going to go down yeah. and up. And then this one we can go up. So it'll probably be like this. Drill this hole in that open one. That one right there, so not too deep. Right there? Yep. Screw in and then I'm we'll wind it up. Yeah. Okay, now you can actually drive the screw into while I hold it. Extend it. So, drill the end one. Sorry, if you go straight. Oh, that one's right in the crease. Is that I don't. I don't need to do every one of them. Okay. You want me to do it anyways? Um, do this one for now. One straight. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Yeah. yeah. Straight enough. Okay. You don't see this.
It's actually, probably, it's probably not a good idea to do two because occasionally, like if you're troubleshooting, you might have to disconnect them. So if you disconnect them, you'd have to take out four screws. And it's fine, you know, it's not going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, so this is installed. This light situation is difficult. Yeah. Let's see. So there's the backbone. Of course, I can extend it to the left there. It's like taking Actually, all yeah, this in focus. Yeah. yeah, so there's the backbone. I can just extend it way to the left. Actually, pretty far. And of course, you can make uh, other sections of a backbone by running a cable. Uh, GMS 10 and then the Blue Seas. So now when I run all of these things obviously these two items uh, right here both need power so they'll go to the blue seas the Garmin GPS units will, from the upper and lower helm will go to the blue seas and uh, I don't even know what else yet what are we doing now? Uh, I am, I am going to wire up the blue seas for power from the 45 amp breaker Okay. So here or upstairs? It's it's coming right off of there. So there's a breaker that's 45 amp for each autopilot. We're gonna change. It's not gonna read autopilot anymore. It's gonna say like I don't know, Marine Network or Mer or Garmin or whatever. It's gonna be in this panel yes. behind it. No, it's right here. It's gonna be this one. That's a 45 amp breaker. Oh, but where do you put the blue seas? That's right there. Oh, that's it right yeah. there. Yeah. So we're gonna be taking power from the 45 amp. Taking it to the blue seas, and then we're going to be taking a ground wire, and then grounding it somewhere really good. Um, not exactly sure. And wiring it to that breaker. That yes. Says autopilot. Yeah. Okay. So that way, when you throw that breaker on, you have power, 45 amps worth of power at 12 volts or 13 volts, power to the blue seas, and then from there you can take it off each branch to power all the individual components. I'm so glad you know how to do this. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> wrong, but that's all right. There's no perfect way. Yeah. Seems like there's enough room up there. Yeah. To get up there. Don't even see a red wire come up. Okay. Hang on. Is it a thick one or a skinny yeah, very one? Very thick. Very thick. Yeah. I see a very thick red one, but it's going up to the upper helm. No, it would be moving crazy all around. No. See it? It should be up there. I see the wires moving, but I don't see that wire. Is it cut? Yeah, I should see like an end that had poked through. I see an end, but it's behind a bunch of wires. DIY. Okay, move it. All right, hold on. All right. I think we're gonna have to take it down and push it up from a different angle. See if we can hit it on the front side. So, from here, pull it down. From here, it looks like it's closed, but it's actually yeah. behind. Pull it out. Yeah, pull it out. See anything? No. It's caught on something. I'm just trying to figure out where. Yeah. Just right in the bundle. Let me try another spot here. What if... What if you undo the top of this... Yeah, pole? Yeah, I know. Pole. I started to, but it's kind of a Yeah. We might have to. Alright, let me try this path. Tell me what you see now. Here it comes. Is there anything I can touch up here that would shock me? Not really. Okay. Um, you see anything? I'm moving out of the way so yeah. I can see if I can find it. It's up there, of course, but it's just behind everything. Yeah. Oh. Wiggle it around. Feels like you're hitting the wood. Yeah, all right, let me try another spot here. All right, let me try another one. If I can stick 
my head a little bit. See it. Yeah. Look at I'm trying to move it out of the way. I wonder if you can move some of these wires out of the way. Yeah, I'm trying to like make it go. Can we cut some of these? Hold on, try this. Oh, got it. Got it? Yes. Alright. Okay. Alright, that worked. Hang on, let me get it up so okay. it's not on underneath wires. Yeah. Son of a biscuit eater. Pull out enough so that it can go to um, the blue seas. Okay, yeah, it's over there. All right. All right. All right, now let's do the black one. And if we can get the black one, then we're just about all free. Take a break. <sighs> all right, boat's a wreck again, and we are in the middle of doing all the Garmin stuff. So we got lots of Garmin parts, lots of cables, lots of wiring stuff, lots of tools, lots of lights. Got my little uh, panel that will go up here because that hole is just not going to work and it's going to be awkward so it's going to be a lot like this one right here for the fusion and then we're starting up here started hooking up the wires up here to the blue seas uh, started plugging stuff into the GMS 10 and got a tip online on one of the uh, uh, Facebook forums I think it, I think it was the Garmin Marine user forums. He told me about these Anchor um, NMEA 2000 T's. So I got this four gang T and the starter set, which has, of course, the power uh, and ter and terminators on each end. So I think that should do more than enough for what I need up here. I might have to run uh, another drop cable to go into the helm area, uh, electrical closet. Um, or possibly down below when I do the autopilot. I'm not sure. I don't know if I'll need one or not. I could probably just get a long cable and run it up here, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, so I started running cables through. Let me get a flashlight here. Where's my flashlight? Does anybody see my flashlight? There it is. All right. So back there, you can see where stuff comes through the upper, from the upper helm to the lower helm see here it's kind of uh, hard to see and uh, fishing cables through there is a little bit difficult and some of them have to go down this tube so I've got all that exposed and that runs down into the electrical closet uh, and there's a whole bunch of stuff behind this closet uh, or behind this structure here behind the helm so and then in addition I've got all these uh, post-it notes a dock neighbor um, uses this and uh, uses it effectively and I think it will help me um, focus and at first I started writing many uh, like this is just one that reminds me of eat, um, I, as I install it I look up what the uh, fuse requirement is and then I will get fuses and install them there and label them uh, but this helps focus uh, what I'm doing for one specific task when I first started I was writing real small and dozens of things on these. I lose them and you have to reconfigure them to rewrite them. So you just have to uh, do one thing on one post-it note and then remove it when it's done. And hold that post-it note or, or don't veer from that post-it note until that one item is done. So I got to run the power cables, which they are run. They just got to be hooked to, at, at the other end of the closet. Um, the USB card reader is going to go somewhere around where that is. Uh, cut overhead for the GHC 20 panel. That's going to be cut out right there. Um, so, and uh, lower network and NMEA cables, which are going to be run out of this right here, 
right here's a cable gland so I'm gonna have to get a different one to run several cables out of there for the to go into the back of this so on the lower helm one what we will be using is let's just take a look at how many can't read them with the caps on all right so we will be using this this is for the lower helm so we will be using this to plug into the NMEA 2000 network we will be using the high-speed cable to go to the GMS 10 uh, now one of the reasons why you need a high-speed cable is because in here I have the Navionics Vision Plus charts and apparently you can't get all that data through an NME 2000 you must use the network the Garmin network cable uh, now I could plug this directly into the upper helm chart plotter and it would share that data but I also have a radar to plug in so uh, the GMS 10 or anything else in the future that's network related the GMS 10 you just plug everything in there that's like a central uh, hub and as you can see obviously you know you've got the uh, lower helm here that's going to have everything over here this is like the central area that I've selected to put all this stuff uh, as a hub like a central hub so you've got your power in there you've got your um, uh, data cables the GMS 10 and you've got your NMEA 2000 network because in addition up top upper helm it's going to have basically everything what am I getting my hand here? Uh, it's basically going to have everything that the lower helm will have. So this is a very short run. There's a through, uh, a uh, pass through right above this roof, so I can pass everything up under there, and it's under the, uh, you know, under the uh, upper helm enclosure, which is nice and dry, and I'll be able to put everything uh, directly up through there. So shortest runs will be, you know, the upper helm equipment will be like over here so it'll go down through a hole and then over to here so that's going to be a short run for everything uh, and then the radar I will actually have to run it uh, there's, a, there's a whole uh, uh, a panel on the outside out here actually I'll show you let's just look at it we'll just go through everything so this panel right here I just made that up and I, there's a cutout right here and there's a pass through right there and uh, so that the radar cable will go through here into there and then it goes actually I believe it goes over and then it goes no I'm sorry wait I think it goes under under here so this handle comes down and there's a, a wire run that goes all the way up it's either this one or this one I can't remember we'll figure it out I think I can look actually I, I can tell up here because of all the lights that you saw in the back there, you'll be able to see all the wires. So right here, it may go down the center, because as you can see, that's not quite centered with the handrail. So we'll see. Um, but anyways, that's where the radar stuff will be run, and then that will be plugged into here. Um, and in addition, I've got the uh, Fusion Stereo, which also has uh, NMA 2000 connectability. So once you connect it, you'll be able to control everything from your chart plotter um, let's see back to this the USB I have the card reader right here that plugs into that the card reader all it does is allows you to mount this in a in a nice uh, convenient location so you're not always trying to reach this point right here uh, which is the back so it's a little bit of a pain in the ass um, sonar I will have to hook up um, and then power power is gonna come you know, it's going to be a short run. It's already hooked up from there to right there. The sonar is going to be a little bit of a bear because it's going to have to go from the back of the chart plotter here up down this tube through the closet over down and then the uh, transducer is going to be right under there. Uh, and getting that plug through that pipe is going to be a pain. I may have to cut the end off. I don't know. Some things they don't want you to cut ends off and re-splice them. Other things it's not too big of a deal, so I have to do a little bit of research on that. Uh, we'll see.
I think it said in the instructions whether or not you can do that. So this is uh, this is in work, and that's basically the overview. Got a lot of work to do, but now that I have that central point all mounted and routed and power to it, everything else should go fairly quickly. Um, with the exception of the radar, because I bought a mast, and I'm gonna have to do some some work to that, and then some configuring of some fiberglass and holes and uh, sealant and, fi and different things like that to get these runs uh, uh, wire pass-throughs to go through the upper deck and then to be routed somewhere all the way up here. I can route things behind this uh, valance here too. I already have a bunch of wires there so if I have it pass through behind that back valance I can have it come down and that's pretty easy. There's already zip tie runs up there and, and cable holders. So that. We'll see. I have a basic plan, but all the details are not worked out yet. So, all right. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I just got it out. That matches this one over here. So this is the kind of stuff you discover when you're doing wiring on your boat. Let's just drop the screw. Back there is the main negative bus bar. Just that one small brass one right in the center of the screen there. I I can get it right. Right there. Well, the bottom terminal had this big, uh, I don't know, maybe one aught cable. And this is the main ground probably running to the back to the battery well it was loose and look at it you know it's all crusty and that's not burning that's like a little bit of corrosion and varnish so I'm gonna use the Milwaukee die grinder with a scotch bright pad to clean that up and then I'm adding that main bus bar so eventually I'm going to either run a new cable or cut this off and re-terminate it and it's going to go to that one right there and then from that one back to that one uh, and probably another one next to it so that uh, there's just way too many. I've already removed like six of these that were no longer, you know, six grounds that were no longer used. Um, so I'm just working my way through this. We got the Milwaukee die grinder. One of the best damn tools for boats. Good in fiberglass. Right now it's got a scotch bright pad on it. It's a little rougher than I should probably use. I should probably have the red one, but it'll do. So I'm gonna clean this ground up and it'll go from crusty to almost new in seconds. Let's do the other side. So, oh, that's a year's worth of tarnishing and corrosion cleaned up in seconds. Now th this needs to be changed, and I'll change it. But for now, I just gotta. I'm wiring up the Garmin, so I got a wire in my mouth. So I just gotta uh, make it work for right now, and I'll come back and take care of this whole wire. So, uh -uh. all right, making a little bit of progress. Got the. GMS 10 powered up. We got power going to the NEMA 2000. We got some uh, just temporary um, fuses in there. I gotta get the right ones. Got the uh, G, G, what is this? This is the uh, GHC 50, the new 50. So it's pretty fancy looking. That's the panel, starboard panel. To match the starboard panel over there because they had old cutouts up there. This thing's pretty cool, pretty fancy. So, we are running wires through this helm. Let me back up a little bit uh, to the upper helm. So, now I need to run power from this uh, Blue Seas to the upper Garmin 
And so these little Harbor Freight fiberglass sticks that are used for running wire are great because when you got to go through a huge bundle, if you're just trying to poke some wires through, inevitably they get sideways or they don't go in the direction you want. You uh, poke that fiberglass stick through there and, uh, and you can kind of get the angle you want. So I hit it, you know, coming directly at that angle right there, coming out and it just poked all the way out. So now we're taping two wires. This is a uh, Anchor Marine tinned wire, um, 12 gauge, it's good enough for I think 20, 20 amps, but I only need five up there. So I'm, in case I need a little extra power, we're going to run these up there. <clears throat> so we're actually going to run those up there. So I'm going to go upstairs and show you what we're doing, poking through boats a mess. Eventually we'll get to the exterior. That'll be the fun part though, and much easier. Got a mast, the radar is going to go on that. So up under here, under the helm. We got there's my little fiberglass rod right there so let's see let me see if I can rest this on something here give me a second here let's see if we can get it okay I'm gonna put it pull it up it's getting a little stuck There we go. And there's our two wires. Pull plenty. I can always pull it back. Alright, that should be plenty. And yeah, we got plenty. A lot of that. No, I don't cut anything just yet. I gotta wire it up here. And then um then I'll cut it down there. I'll pull it back down. So that wire bundle, I've already taken probably 20 wires and there's probably another 20 that are going to come out of there. So so these little plastic or fiberglass rods from Harbor Freight, very helpful at home doing wiring, but they're helpful in a boat too. All right, we've got uh, both Garmin 923 XSVs home. I just made a little rig up here to power them up. It's a lot easier to do chart updates at home and I'm using the tablet uh, connected to Wi-Fi to do the chart updates so it's transferring charts into there simultaneously I don't even know how to do this honestly you see all the green check marks when you first hook up and couple the uh, like a tablet or your phone uh, you have to have Wi-Fi or internet to do this uh, But everything just kind of starts happening if it doesn't happen. I just start poking around and Generally everything just starts going and just keep messing around till you get green check marks on all of these things smart notifications I don't know if I will hook that up. I'll try to get the glare out of there um, Because I think I had that on earlier and I was getting notifications from uh things I did not want to get notifications on so like typical things I would get notifications on my phone I started getting on the chart plotter I don't really want that I'll have to explore it and I think you can set it so you get notifications only from certain things which might be useful uh, for instance uh, you know if you've got your phone up on the you know the galley or something and it's charging uh, and you get a text from somebody or an email from a particular person you could get a notification on your chart plotter um, so that might be useful, but it'll take a little bit of setting up and I didn't want to do that at that point. So I just shut it off for now. So it looks like I am on the last thing, which is transferring charts. And, uh, once this one is set up, this one should be already set up, but I'll, I'll sync with that one here just a little bit later, but that one's already been registered and, and synced up and had some, uh, charts updated. Uh, a couple weeks ago um, now with the Garmin Navionics Vision Plus it's actually a subscription service and you get chart updates daily if you want to you know I don't know how often anybody would need to have daily chart updates maybe if you're a you know uh, 
a captain running a tugboat or something like that and you're going through new areas probably important to have uh, good updates kind of like in aviation they get they get daily updates for anything going on um, so I'd kind of you know think about it in that terms uh, but if you're just tooling around your home area you know probably just update it now and then uh, every couple days or, or maybe you want to update it every time you go out if you only go out once a week or you know twice a week just update it before you go out so that's one good thing that uh, is good about Navionics Vision Plus is you get updates so if there's some dredging going on and it's going to be reported or uh, a new report of a sunken vessel or some kind of hazard and you do the updates if that if that information got to the update people and then you update it should be in your chart so uh, it's kind of a nice to have um, so anyways once this one is done already updated once this one is done then I should be able to get the uh, uh, high-speed cable the Ethernet cable network cable between the two and then I should be able to read the Navionics Vision Plus that's stored in this one in real time on this one because right now uh, when I had it hooked up at the boat I could see the charts for that one but I could not see them on that one I did a little bit of research and I think you have to register it and get it all online uh, I mean meaning online everything up to date on this because this is a paid subscription you know an initial purchase plus subscription to enable it to go to another uh, plotter I believe you know Garmin has to know that this plotter is also also belongs to me who is the owner of these charts um, at least that's the way I understand it not 100% sure of that but uh, if anybody knows for sure this you know the details of these downloads and sharing and all this stuff I'm weak on uh, and mainly it's because I haven't had to do any research I just power things up and it just tends to work uh, and I haven't really had to to mess around with it so uh, once I get this update done on this plotter then I will uh, take everything back to the boat hook the cables up and uh, see if everything is then working and we'll see what happens so anyways uh, so far so good